Nicolaus Copernicus was born February 19, 1473 in Torn, Poland into a wealthy family. His father was a well-to-do merchant and his mother came from a leading merchant family as well. From this wealth he was able to get a good education. He traveled to Italy at the age of 18 to attend the University of Krakow to study law and regulations of the Catholic Church. Copernicus was the father of modern astronomy. His model greatly simplified the knowledge and understanding that we had of the universe. Copernicus began to collect books on mathematics and astronomy in his free time. In 1496, through the effects of his uncle who was the bishop and ruler of Ermland, he became a canon for a local church. He then set off for Bologna, Italy to study canon law. While attending the University of Bologna, he lived and worked with astronomy professor Domenchio Maria de Novaria, doing research and helping him make observations of the heavens. When he returned to Poland in 1506 to take up his official duties, his room in one of the towers surrounding the town had an observatory, giving him an opportunity to study the night sky. In Copernicus's lifetime, most believed that Earth held its place at the center of the universe. The sun, the stars, and all the planets revolved around it. By around 1508, Copernicus had begun developing his own celestial model, a heliocentric planetary system. He was greatly influenced by Regio Montanus 15th century work, Epitome of the Algamist, which presented an alternative to Ptolemy's model of the universe. In 1514, Copernicus distributed a handwritten book that set out his view of the universe. He proposed that the center of the universe was not Earth, but that the sun lay near it. He suggested that Earth's rotation accounted for the rise and setting of the sun, the movement of the stars, and that the cycle of seasons was caused by Earth's revolutions around it. Lastly, he proposed that Earth's motion through space caused the retrograde motion of the planets across the night sky. Copernicus finished the first manuscript of his book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres in 1532. He laid out his model of the solar system and the path of the planets. He didn't publish the book, however, until 1543. Copernicus's findings challenged the old model, and the church did ban the book in 1616 and were not allowed to be read for about three centuries. The Catholic Church wasn't the only Christian faith to reject Copernicus's idea. Religious leader Martin Luther voiced his opposition to the heliocentric system model, saying, This fool wants to turn the whole art of astronomy upside down. A comedy was even written criticizing Copernicus by playwright Wilhelm Gennafius named The Foolish Sage, and was staged at a Latin school in Elblag. In the play, Copernicus was caricatured as a haughty, cold, aloof man who dabbled in astronomy. Copernicus's theories led to the Copernican Revolution, which is considered the launching point of modern astronomy and the scientific revolution. More specifically, his theories had important consequences for later thinkers such as Galileo, Kepler, Descartes, and Newton. Copernicus took astronomy from a system of where we wanted to believe certain things were true to a system of where we could prove certain things were true. Copernicus also achieved other major things such as formulating the quantity theory of money, was the leading physician in Warmia, Poland, was an administrator of a town, organized the Polish defense during the siege of Allenstein during the Polish Teutonic War, and painted a self-portrait of himself. On May 4, 1543, Copernicus died from a stroke at the age of 70 in Fromborg, Poland. Legend has it that he was presented with the final printed pages of his On the Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres on the day he died. It is told he awoke from his stroke-induced coma, looked at his book, and died peacefully. For many years, there was controversy on the location of the remains of Copernicus. He was reported to be buried in the Fromborg Cathedral. That was until 2005 when his remains were found underneath the cathedral floor. Forensic experts used the skull to reconstruct a face that closely resembled Copernicus' features. The skull also showed it had belonged to a man who had died around the age of 70, which Copernicus did. DNA matched hair samples from a book owned by Copernicus, giving experts 100% confidence that it was in fact Copernicus.